My name is Mary Dixon, and I am a downwinder. I grew up in Salt Lake City in like the early 60s. So it was a time when they were testing above ground in Nevada, but I don't remember ever hearing about tests. I don't remember hearing about fallout, about people getting sick. We just did what all the other kids did. We played in rain puddles in the gutters. We made um, ice cream out of snow. We'd put vanilla and sugar in it and eat it and pretend it was ice cream. We ate vegetables straight out of the garden. We drank milk sometimes from the cow when we went to my grandfather's in Morgan. So we grew up pretty oblivious to the fallout that was dropping down on all of us. We saw people getting sick in our neighborhood. We saw people getting cancers and tumors. My little eight-year-old friend died. Um, and all I knew is that she came to school one day with her head shaved and then soon she was gone. And then three weeks after that, her little brother died. He was four, and he had testicular cancer, which we'd never heard of. Um, and Fran's father started getting brain cancer and brain tumors, and one friend had pains in her legs, and we always thought she was a hypochondriac, and I'm embarrassed to say we made fun of her, and then she ended up dying of bone cancer. So we started seeing all these things with the other little neighborhood kids and their parents who lived near us, but we never connected it to fallout. We just thought it was bad luck. In 85, I got diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and I still, I was so young, I just didn't think much of it. I really didn't. I thought, well, okay, they told me it's the easiest one to get if you have to get cancer. And I remember saying to my doctor, well, I wasn't exactly shopping, but he said, you know, your chances are really great. And so again, I didn't worry. I just looked at this as, oh, this is great. I get some time off. And then I was writing for an arts magazine called Neo, and they asked me to do a story on a woman who was doing an oral history of downwinders. Um, and she was a photojournalist from New York who had come out to Utah to live, and she was going around southern Utah and around the state. And then I remember her saying she went to Montana and Wyoming. I thought, well, why is she going there? Um, and I had to interview her for an article. And so I'm interviewing her, and she's talking about the diseases that are related, mostly the cancers related to fallout. And when she said thyroid cancer, I, you know, just kind of nonchalantly said, oh, I had thyroid cancer. And she stopped, and that's when she started interviewing me, and she's like, where did you grow up? Did you drink milk? Asking me all these things. And, you know, I grew up in Salt Lake. Um, yeah, we drink milk sometimes off my grandfather's from the farm, from the cows. And that's when she stopped and she said, I want to interview you. You're a downwinder. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. I grew up in Salt Lake. And she goes, oh, you people are so naive. And she showed me Richard Miller's map of where the fallout went. And that's the map that probably everybody's seen by now because everyone passes it out like crazy where Utah's almost completely blacked out, and those black lines go all the way across the country, all the way to the East Coast, all the way up into Canada. And I, that was the first time I thought that, oh, maybe something bigger happened. Maybe that's what explains all these cancers and tumors in my neighborhood. And my sister was later diagnosed with lupus, and it took them forever to diagnose her. It's an autoimmune disease. and. Lupus was one of the things that Carol Gallagher said was likely related to fallout. So my sister and I started gathering names from the neighborhood where we grew up. And that list got to be about 54 people before very long because they kept getting sick later. And we would hear later about, you know, the Gordon Hillier who lived on our street who had leukemia and later died. We would hear about other people with lupus. We would hear about more cancers. And it just kept growing. I mean, I still hear about other people today, people I didn't know then. And it kind of sunk in for me that, OK, this could be where it went. But then the more I started digging and learning, the more I was convinced that's what happened to us. So when it started happening during the Bush era that they were talking about resuming nuclear testing. I just thought, do they not know this history? Do they not know this history? And I remember going with four other women 
well, three, because there were four of us total, and one of them was from southern Utah and had had various forms of cancer, had a muscle disease, couldn't even walk, was in a wheelchair, and we went from congressional office to congressional office to tell them about downwinders, and it was shocking how many didn't even know what they were, had never even heard the word. Um, and there was one in Chuck Hagel's office, one of his people that we ended up talking to, because you seldom get to talk to the real senator, and he had worked on a nuclear submarine, so he knew exactly what we were talking about, and, and we presented him with everything and maps and the research, and he just said, you know, you have to tell them about this. They just don't know. They don't know. And so we had Richard Miller's map, and we went to every office. We even gave one to Hillary Clinton's office, and we went everywhere, and it was interesting. Um, I can't remember which senator it was, but not a nice man. He was from the West, and he just basically dismissed us and said, well, this is the price. This is the price we have to pay. This is the price we have to pay to fight terrorism. And I just thought, what planet are you from that you think a nuclear weapon will fight terrorists? The more you dig into it, the more it's just been this history of cover-up, of lies. They didn't want to admit it, and it's really hard to think that the government that, that you believed in, and we all grew up, in my era anyway, trusting the government and trusting doctors and trusting authority, it was really hard to believe that they knowingly let that happen to us. That essentially, there was a nuclear war. It was undeclared, but to me, that whole arms race was a nuclear war because we killed our own, Russia killed its own, everywhere they tested, they killed their own. And it's very, very discouraging to think that your government will sacrifice you in the name of national security. It's hard to ever, ever trust them again. And every time I hear from anyone in the government saying, trust us, it's like my detectors go off. It's like that Will Robinson character going, boop, 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 danger, Will Robinson, danger. I, I will never trust them again, never, never. To me, one of the hardest things is not only that it happened, not only that I personally got sick, that my sister ended up dying of lupus, it, and that so many people, I just see people more and more who we've lost. And a lot of the people who know the story and who fought the fight with me are now dead. And one of the hardest things besides that and losing people is just how Americans out large do not know that chapter of history. They don't know what happened. They don't know that it wasn't just Southern Utah, that it was across the country. They just don't know. And trying to increase that awareness is so, it's such an uphill battle. When you look at what this genie we let out of the bottle has done and the havoc it's wreaked on the planet, on the, on the health of people, it's it's a, an, I would say, an international catastrophe. It's huge. The consequences of that, though they may have been unintended, have been huge, and they're long-lasting, and they continue. And that's why I just think people need, they need to know that history, because if they don't know it, they won't do anything to keep it from happening again. And we will live through it again, and there will be more victims. And I just think we can't, we can't afford to do that to our people. You don't do that to your people. Um, and so I, I, I guess that fight never stops. I guess it just won't stop.